Welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode 14 of my Lotus Esprit diary. So you join me uh, sat in the engine bay of the Esprit and I'm trying to sort out the fuel breather pipe, uh, the fuel tank breather. Now it's quite a unnecessarily complicated thing I think uh, but I'm going to try and follow what it says in the manual because there was a reason why they put the T on this side and the outflow on this side. I don't know why, but it means that you've got one piece coming all the way up to here and another piece coming all the way back again, which doesn't really make any sense, but it's how the book says, so I'm going to follow that. So this is what happens to the um, fuel breather pipe. Um, it just becomes brittle. See, so it's just snapping and splitting very easily. Um, so that needs to be replaced. It goes all the way around the engine bay from one fuel tank to the other. So it's one of replacement fuel breather pipes. So this is the PVC pipe. Um, got a short end that goes to the left-hand side of the car, to the uh, valve there. Then there's the T-piece. Then you've got two really long um, stretches and I've, I've actually taped them together, a bit of electrician tape, just to keep them easy to feed and keep them neat. And then coming down this side, this will then go into the right-hand side of the car uh, valve. And then this bit, which I've cut, you know, needlessly too long, I've got plenty of the pipe, um, is the one that then goes out um, down through, effectively, the top of the wheel arch, I think, to, to drain under the car or to breathe through under the car. So here we are looking behind, uh, what would it be, behind the sort of the C pillar, if you like. Um, so you've got the, um, the fuel filler uh, neck there. Uh, down into the fuel tank and there's a, a pipe, um, a sort of rubber pipe, like a rubber pipe connected to that and then from that comes another, from the neck comes another pipe another one up to this metal piece here which is sort of a strut for the um, for the tailgate uh, lift or tailgate struts um, and here at the top of it is this little kind of nipple so i stripped off the old pipe because it was a bit uh, it was knackered really um, and inside there is what they call an anti-surge valve um, so I'm, i believe it's in the unlikely event that you're turning upside down it means the fuel doesn't start pouring out which is obviously a good thing so what i've got to try and do is to connect a new piece of pipe to that uh, to then start the journey kind of around the top of the engine bay and back down again so yeah, there's the new pipe uh, coming down there, fixed onto the valve, onto the anti-surge valve, uh, tightened up with the um, fuel hose clip. So you've just got to do the other side now. So on the left-hand side of the car, a little bit more awkward. You've got this uh, big bit of ducting in the way that sort of vents through to the uh, luggage compartment. So I've had to take that out. I've, done that. I've now got full access to the valve uh, up here and to the hose clip to do up. So what I've got to do now is to tuck that up behind this piece of sort of line, uh, piece of trim carpet and stick that back down and tidy the ends up and all will be good. So quick parts update. Um, I sent away the rear brake calipers to be reconditioned. Uh, sent them to a place called BCS, Brake Caliper Specialists. Um, they give me a good quote uh, or estimate for, for stripping them down and refurbishing them. Unfortunately, uh, the handbrake mechanism on this particular, on this one, I don't know which side that one is, is seized beyond being released, even by people who are specialists in calipers. So they stripped them all down, but that's as far as they could get with that one. So because they're really hard to get hold of uh, replacement ones, um, the parts inside uh, the handbrake mechanisms apparently are like, impossible to get. They don't, you know, they're, they're unavailable. Um, I decided to order a new set. So although they couldn't do anything with them apart from sort of partially stripping them, uh, BCS did send the brake calipers back to me along with a big box full of uh, packing chips. But I was really pleased with how they dealt with me, even though I, you know, I've, I've paid them nothing. Um, sadly, um, it, it was it was good service and good communication on getting the stuff back to me. So here's the replacement set from PM Parts. 
Um, they are different in the sense of the sort of fittings seem to be different on, on different sides, but I'm reliably informed that they do fit and they do work. There's obviously just a different, slightly different way of fitting and all the different bits and pieces needed to do so come with it, um, along with discs and pads, because the pads are slightly different for these. Um, but yeah, they look they look really nice. They should be hopefully hopefully be very effective as well. Um, although clearly the rear brakes are have you know less to do than than front brakes. But uh, front brakes are currently all right. But maybe at some point in the future I will uh, get the front brakes done as well with with a similar sort of upgrade part as as this. So I'm pleased to have got that fuel tank breather pipe done. It's a small job, um, but quite a vital one, and it's obviously been ineffective for some while the pipe work that was in there was brittle and disconnected in places so it obviously wasn't doing its job so anyway that's done i've got quite a lot more to do in the engine bay here um, i've got various hoses to change uh, i've got all the ducting to put back in um, i want to maybe paint the chassis um, get it sort of looking a bit nicer. Got to replace the silver foiled um, heat um, you know, heat shield. Um, yeah, a bunch of other stuff. I've got a big bit of a list. So I hope you'll join me again next time uh, when I get a few more jobs done. And thank you for watching. Bye bye.